start of another bike packing adventure. This time it's the Second City Divide. It's a 360 mile ride between Glasgow and Manchester. I'm here at Glasgow Central Station just waiting for my compatriots Simon and Rob to arrive and then we'll be getting on our way. Here's the bike all loaded up. On the front we have the cooking system, navigation system, uh, clothing system and sleeping system. And all the food and the toilet system in there. Bits and bobs in the middle here and the drink system. Alright. Good to see you. Oh hi, elbows. <laughs> yeah, okay, nice to meet you. Cheers. We best get going. Let's go. It didn't take too long getting out of Glasgow. Um, we're out into some decent countryside now. We're going to get a coffee at the White Lee Visitor Centre. It's sort of quite scenic in a strange way. These man made structures, apparently, these uh, wind turbines they generate 2,000 megawatts of power. It's similar to um, an electric bike, really. Um, but well, I wouldn't want to try and keep up with a wind turbine on any bike. It'd be bloody hard. Towards the end of the wind farm we came across our first locked gate. A minor obstacle that didn't deter us. up. This should be the final one of the day. We're on about 55 miles so another say 10 to the campsite. This is a splendid little track. It's not a single track is it? It's a double track with a grassy middle. Beautiful. This looks a bit Rough ahead, might be hiker bike, but let's see. It was quite muddy, but we made it through without too much problem. Simon made an interesting comment. He said, that could be the penis wood over there. I don't know what he means. Anyway, let's concentrate on not falling off. Oh, yes, I like this. Downhill all the way to the campsite. Well, apart from that little hill there, which we've got to go over. Peaceful spot. Midges starting to bite. Yep. Should we get moving? Incredible to think that uh, about half ten this morning I was flying up this train line heading into Glasgow and now 60 miles later I'm coming back past it. We're very close to the campsite now. Yep, here's the campsite. Right by the side of the trail. The barbecue going or something, a fire pit. Yep, this will do. So here's the camp for the night. Midge City. Hey, it's a good look, isn't it? Just gonna get my spag ball. There we go. All set up. And the midge is still troublesome. Oh, yes. Yeah. Keep moving.
Yeah, day two of the second city divide. We've left the midge infested campsite. Although to be fair, it was a, a nice enough place. The showers were good. And uh, we've just been to the shop in Abington to get a bit of lunch to take with us. And uh, now we, we've got no, uh, no campsite booked or anything tonight. It's just where we get where we find somewhere suitable at the end of the day. Probably be about 60 miles today, something like that. A lot depends on the terrain. Um, let's see how we get on. So here we have the penis-shaped wood, famous around these parts. Onwards and upwards. We're now entering another wind farm. Well, the wind turbines are having a day off. Well, it is Sunday, they're entitled to a day off. Well, it could be the lack of wind. It's quite a climb, that, isn't it? That's where we come from down there. Bloody hell. Very nice. Perfectly still. Look at that. Wonderful, isn't it? Amazing. Not sure I can say the same for the rest of it. Hiya! Oh, we just come onto this track. It's a proper tyre shredder. Sharp stones. And uh, quite steep, actually. I might just push it up here for a bit to get onto some better surface. It's actually harder pushing it up with all this weight. As soon as I can ride, get back on. I wonder if we'll meet the captain. Where is he? I don't know. Bird's eye? Captain Birdseye. After the captain's road, we came across the Tushy Law Inn alongside Ettrick Water, where we stopped for a pint with the friendly locals. We headed into Crake Forest to look for a suitable place to wild camp for the night, and there we found a wonderful spot by a babbling stream. But oh no, we once again realised that we would be plagued by the dreaded midge. So we swiftly put up our tents and dived under cover, and soon we were falling asleep to the sound of a churring night jar. Superb! It's almost midge free in this forest, but down by the campsite it's horrendous. Infested with midges. Well, 
Day three and we're back on the trails through the forest, Craig Forest, heading for Teviot Head and then on to Kielder. Hopefully we'll get something to eat and some water on the way. The track's just come to a dead end but there is a connecting road up through this forest so we've got to push the bikes up through here which I'm not looking forward to. There's no other way. Okay. Definitely an unpaved road this. We found the forest trail, but there was a six foot ditch to negotiate to get onto it. Unbelievable. It's a proper rough stuff this. On the open road. Just coming out of Dumfries and Galloway into the Scottish borders. We came across the semi ruined Hermitage Castle with its history of torture, treason, and romantic trysts, and a reputation as one of the most sinister and atmospheric castles in Scotland. In the 16th century, its fortified tower was used to film episodes of I'm a Prisoner, Get Me Out of Here, and hosted by Mary Queen of Scots and her lover, the 4th Earl of Bothwell. It's just forest as far as the eye can see. Oh. After a long steady climb, we reached the border between Scotland and England. We didn't see another soul for many miles of endless forest tracks until reaching Kielder Water and civilization. We stopped at Kielder for something to eat. Um, had a nice plate of fish and chips actually. Um, and then from here, it's about 25 miles of forest trails to Holt Whistle. And I'm going to look for somewhere to camp in that area. This is tonight's campsite, just outside Holt Whistle. Day four, and we're heading into Holt Whistle for provisions for the rest of the day. Now if you're cycling through Holtwistle and you are in need of sustenance, I can highly recommend the Fuller House breakfast at Jethro's. You won't be disappointed. We're now on the South Tyne Trail, which is a disused railway line running between Holtwistle and Alston. It's fairly easy going, so I'm appreciating it because we've just had a massive breakfast and uh, we're fueled up for the ride. This is a Lamley Viaduct. We've got a bit of a problem at the end of here. The trail has been blocked off. We're not going to be able to get to uh, Alston this way. We're going to have to turn round. Well, that's the end of the trail. Unless we want to carry the bikes down there and up the other side. I mean, Richard Hannay managed it in the 39 steps, but he didn't have a bike loaded up like this. I think we'll do the diversion, eh? So we've done the detour, and it's got us around the house, which was blocking the way through. The guy wouldn't sell the house for a million pound, apparently. That was a good few years ago. We'll go down here and rejoin the trail, which is just down there. So where do you reckon we're going?
That one with a little sort of shoulder on it. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. So the, uh, the teams, as they started the match, Pickford in goal, Walker, Storms, Maguire in this 3 4 3 for England, Trivia, Phillips, Rice, and Shaw, Saka, Kane, and Sterling. So I've got Chris Waddle alongside me in the commentary positions behind the Perspex Shield. The wind's getting up. Quite a few horse flies about. Just keep moving. Right, we're on our way up to uh, Cross Fell, which is that peak over there. Obviously, follow this track up and then up along that ridge. It's lovely and peaceful. Just having a bite to eat here. Pain scored. We've come from somewhere down there along that track heading up to this really rocky path. And now we're having to hike a bike, there's no way you can ride up this, bloody hell. Anyway, hopefully it won't be too too far this way we get back on a rideable surface, but we're heading for the Bothy at the top, we'll probably camp next to it. You got a bucket in your panniers. Oh, it's empty well, is it? Oh. Well, it looks like the Bothy's seen better days. Right, we found water. It's brilliant. Let's get down and get some. I think I've got a better flow than this uh, filter, to be honest. Even with my prostate. Yeah, it looks pretty clear to me, that. Yeah. Straight out of the river. Well, stream, is it? Yeah. I don't know. That's cool. Now, this is more like it. This is a boffy. This is Greg's boffy. Run by the Greg's business. Obviously the staff have gone home, so there'll be no pasties tonight. I get one in the morning. Greg's Bothy. Hmm.
quick visit to the toilet and then we're off. Oh, start the day with hiker bike. That was really rough getting up there. I had front brake failure coming down Cross Fell, which made things interesting, to say the least. Luckily, it was just a loose grub screw in the brake lever, which I managed to screw back in and carry on. It's a nice place this Dufton isn't it? We had a cafe stop in we had a cafe well we had a, a cafe stop in Dufton. Turn right for the Tan Hill Inn. We're having a pint? Oh yes! It'd be rude not to stop for a pint. We're not going to camp here. No. Beautiful as it is, we'll get down to Semmer Water for camping, hopefully. The decision to push on to Semmer Water backfired as they didn't accept tents. And it was 10 p.m. when we finally pitched our tents for the night at Hard Rock near Hawes. First climb of the day, we'll get over that. Oh, this is out of Hawes. Is that Ingleborough Head? Yeah. Single track tarmac, wonderful. But it won't last long and we were soon on our favourite gravel surface again. I'm going to stop here a second because it's one hell of a view. To the left there, that's Penny Ghent. And there as we sweep round in the distance, the fairly flat top sloping up to the left, that's Pendle Hill. Gives me a feeling that I'm getting closer to home because Pendle Hill, I can see that from the rise I do round Bolton, Ingleborough. You see where we came down, can't you? Oh, that, that white track up there. Come down there, yeah. These two guys were doing the Second City Divide last year and sadly fell by the roadside and didn't make it. We were now on what many consider to be one of the best gravel roads in the country. Hornby Road, also known as the Salter Fell Track, provides five miles of gravel across the forest of Boland. Let's have some caffeine. Day seven, we've just left the campsite at um, near Slaveburn and Lancashire County Council have been very kind to lay down some gravel on the roads for us. Fresh gravel. It's quite good this. Hey. Quite friendly. And now on the Pennine Bridleway, which is extremely rough in parts, this is nothing. This is fantastic, this bit, compared with what we've just come up. Pendle Hill over there, the distance. 
and it's getting very warm. Oh, I nearly came off then. It's very, very rocky this surface. And you're having to dodge rocks, you turn your front wheel and oh it's so easy to come off. This is more like it, this is still the Pennine Bridleway but a much better surface. We just had lunch at the old rock cafe in Trawden and uh, we're now heading towards Willet Reservoir and it's uh, looking pretty good. In fact, this looks superb, as long as those sheep get out of the way. You can see the trail going right up the hill ahead. The old Pennine Bridal Way. Excellent. Now I have a confession to make. I didn't get to Manchester city centre. After 360 miles and 34,000 feet of climbing, I decided that Greater Manchester was good enough for me. So I left it to the young guns to complete the journey the following day. And after another night under canvas, Simon and Rob braved the wet conditions and made it to Manchester city centre. Chapeau to you both.